And hello, everybody. It is Tom Chenault, and it is Adrian Chenault, and it is Mark Victor Hansen today. What an unbelievable start. He's going to have his beautiful wife, Crystal, here any minute. But I am going to tell all of you one thing right now. Before we even get started, I want to get this off my chest. There are very few. I, I have met them all. And I can't say their names because I don't want to shame anybody, but most people off camera are nowhere near the man or woman that they are on camera. Mark Victor Hansen is 10 times the man off camera as he is on. And that's hard to believe. But all of you watching this show today need to plug into whatever he's telling you to plug into, whether it's his beautiful book that he wrote with his wife, whether it's his incredible Ask. The book is called Ask. Whether it's his incredible endeavor to write bestsellers for people, whatever it is, I am telling you, this is the guy and you want to pay attention to him. I love him. I love him. I don't like him. I love him with all of my heart. What do you think? I think we love Mark. We love Mark. There you go. <laughs> I, do. I love you guys like they do in sign language. There yeah. we go. There we go. Yeah, I, I'm so happy to have you back on the show. I'm so excited that Crystal is going to be able to join us as well. <laughs> And you're right. I, I mean, I think this is this is what it really comes down to is that the world needs more people that are really interested in creating that rising tide that lifts all the boats. And that's who Mark and Crystal are. And so it's always fun to get to have a conversation together. Well, let me talk that for a second at a different level than we've ever discussed is, as you know, I'm doing YouTubes every day. And I just did two on, on Elon Musk. One said, we need 10 new Elon Musk to pay off the national debt. And and, and we got 20 people raise their hands and say, I'll be him. Second thing is that Elon Musk is doing such a good job. He's got 40,000 Starlink satellites in orbit right now. Here's what it does. I did another thing with Elon Musk and, and Andrew Carnegie. Andrew Carnegie created America's industrialization by doing railroads, roads. And when uh, Rockefeller tried to goof him up by not buying uh, tra transportation as railroads for his oil and did pipes, he immediately created high-rise buildings called the Empire State Building. I'm saying right now, we're in the greatest time ever, but most of you listening are watching the bad news, got on blinders, and believe we're going to hell in a handbasket. I'm saying just the opposite, man. Because of guys like Elon Musk, and I'm in a couple of tech companies, own one, the breakthrough is that when you have that communication, we're going to have trade and we're going to have education and then one of the guys we're doing a book with, I own a company called Mark Victor Hansen uh, Library.com. We're doing it with uh, Nick Voyacek, you know, the guy with no arms and no legs. He was born, born he had a disease. It has no appendages yet. And he was going to commit suicide at four years old and just drown in his own bathtub. And then God told him, no, 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 you've got a big job. Well, not only does he have a big job, and we're here together on Thursday doing something together, but he's figured out how to use AI, artificial intelligence. Now, that's different than real intelligence, which is what we're doing on this show. But artificial intelligence to communicate in 85 languages relatively instantaneously around the world simultaneously. So it comes in my voice, my thing, whether it's Japanese or Swahili or Spanish or whatever. And, and that is going to be a, a language breakthrough. So for the first time, your show will be listened to not by 17% of humanity, but by potentially all 8 billion that means that we can communicate, we can trade, we can work, and we can educate at levels we've never even considered doing before. And in just scant seconds, my beloved, beautiful, wonderfully wife. I love her. Who I have I way outmarried myself, as you guys readily agree. Here is oh. Hi. Hi. How are you? Tom, Adrian, how are you guys doing? It is so good to see you. So we thought it was false advertising. In fact, people we have... <laughs> <laughs> we thought we were he was just using you as bait you know and then all of a That's sudden right. oh, they come for me up. and they get him what the oh, heck <laughs> now no. we can change the moniker and the whole Look, shot he already got I it all set oh, oh, no. uh, jason's in the back doing a great job He's they've got amazing. this working perfect oh yeah jason's how on top of this guys? thing yeah. how is everybody we are happier than clams and especially happy you're here and just watching what you're doing for so many underprivileged people on the planet, Crystal. You wrote the book, Ask. You changed the price of poker. He's written like 318 books I don't care about. This is the one that is the money book of all time. And congratulations. I still have, you know, you sent me the advanced copy of that book. And I swear to you, this is true. I've got it saved. 
And a lot of times in the middle of the night, I'll go read a little bit of it just because it warms my heart and reminds me of what I need to do every day. And I, Mark's covering his heart like, thank you. I'm covering my heart like, thank you, Crystal. So that's <laughs> Well, oh, that, is, that warms my heart, Tom. It's a true story. Because, you know, there are, there are just so many little nuggets in that book. And I'm not saying it because we wrote it. It's just things that really meant so much to us that we had to share them. And uh, I think it's so important with a book like this to highlight what's meaningful to you and come back to it, you know, because yeah. life keeps happening to us. And let's face it. I mean, it's a, sometimes it's tough. Sometimes it's a grind. And and you get stuck and you don't know what to do next. And it's like, that's why the asking journey is so important because what it does is takes you back into the question, back into the quiet of your own mind, asking yourself, asking others, asking God. And that will just completely revector you because when you ask a question, you're really kind of breaking a paradigm. You know, you're, you're kind of breaking the status quo and you're saying, wait, some things, you know, I, I need to explore. And so that question starts to, you know, explore the universe in a different way. It's pretty powerful. You get illumination, revelation, insight, and breakthroughs. We've never asked a question. Now, now the, let's do a subset of that. Um, and that is that if you ask the wrong question, remember 1974, 50 years ago, I'm going bankrupt. No one bankrupt so fast. I'd check out the biggest, in the biggest library in the world, New York Public Library to go bankrupt by yourself <laughs> if you ask a stupid question you get a stupid answer that's right long term it was the best question i could possibly ask but short term man my heart was fluttering i had goosebumps i was scared i had to go bankruptcy court by myself so and there are a lot of people right now uh, tom and adrian and they're hanging out by their fingernails and what ask does is it gets you to break through because all of us got our own withholds and we talk about seven roadblocks to succeeding the first of which is self-worthiness do i feel worthy to cut the mustard that's that's so huge and and so often we we never you know we never get off a of square one because of that right we don't we don't believe that we have the right we don't believe that we're worthy or that we're capable or whatever it is and and, and so we stay inside of this little box and, and there's no, we, you know, we're, the world is, is losing as a result of us playing small and staying inside of those lines and learning to ask outside of yourself, whether to God, whether to others, whether even to yourself, that's mm -hmm. that first step of beginning to break out of that. Right. Totally. And, you know, you're so right about playing small. I mean, we all have so much more inside of us, but if you don't, sort of come clean with yourself and start asking those questions and you, you won't even know what's stopping you, you know, is the, the unworthiness, is it the doubt, is it the fears, right? That, that you've carried all, all along and uh, these little things that keep you from being your best. And it's just, yeah, I mean, it's so important to start to question those things and, and identify yours. And then you can, it really is like the gate opener because then everything's possible once you do that, right? I, I think that's so true. And, and I loved the way you characterized that of coming clean with yourself. Yeah. Because I think that's that, you know, so, so much of this is first being willing to, to just be, be honest with what your, your current situation is and, and to realize and to believe and to tap into the fact that whatever is that current state is not permanent. Right. I, I, I was at a, a networking event with a, a an incredible woman who I met earlier today who was homeless at 50 years old oh, and had had this entire career in IT. Some stuff happened in her life. Everything blew up and she ended up homeless at 50 years old. And she said, I was standing, I was on a hike with a friend. I was standing literally on a mountain and I had this, this like epiphany moment that I, I had a completely different destiny than anything that I had done up until that point. And she's become this fitness coach and, and done all this stuff. But at 50 years old, you know, it, it would be so easy to feel like your life is over or that, you know, that where do you go from here? It's, you know, you, you're just, you're, you're stuck. And somehow she was able to receive this new mission and she's been able to live into that. And that was just the most inspiring thing to me to realize, you know, that no matter what age you are, no matter how far down you might go, that that's not, you know, that it's never over. Let me talk to that just one second. As you know, in the last month, 500,000, a half million people have been 
goodbye, you have been fired from tech. You had they had yeah. a right, hundred thousand dollar job. We're saying our ask book, if you'll go through the 178 questions, it'll wake you up to what you're supposed to do because everybody is born with a divine destiny code, right? The, in Jeremiah in the Bible, it says, before you were in your mother's womb, I knew you. That means spirit is alive forever. And what happens is that almost everyone's got to pivot. And the only time you pivot, like I wouldn't pivot if I didn't go bankrupt into what I should be doing and out of what I shouldn't be doing, because a lot of these people are doing what they shouldn't be doing. And now they've been freed. Now they say, wait a second, I don't have any money. My wife, my kids are upside down and I don't know what to do. And you now have 360 degrees of freedom. Go back to figuring out what you really were supposed to do as your right livelihood. And, and I don't know another book. And then I'm going to ask you one other favor. Don't get one of these, get two and go over it with ever, whoever your spouse or spouse That's equivalent true. is, your mastermind partner, your church temple, ashram, mosque partner. And what will happen is, back to what Crystal said, you'll have these wondrous revelations and insights that will transition you to where you're supposed to be. And you're going to do better, greater is in your future than you've ever imagined. That is so cool. And so you guys, you, you've created a community around this book. Is that right? Yeah, and that's why we want everyone to go to askthebookclub.com. It's free, and we're going to help you become ma what we call master askers because, you know, the Bible says, ask and you shall receive, but most people don't know how to put themselves in this receptive mood where you live in the assumption of the wish fulfilled. You go, I did, I asked God, I prayed, I got on my hands and knees. Great that you did that, but that's not the point. He, what the next line says, if you read it close, is pray as though the thing for which you're praying has been received. And you go, come on, Tom. Come on, Adrian. That's gobbledygook. What are you saying? You got to have it before you get it. I saw myself <clears throat> when I was bankrupt as world's best-selling author. I saw myself finding the most elegant, picturesque, wise woman <laughs> in the whole world. I wrote down 267 things I needed in, in my perfect wife. Now, she taught me once we met, and I begged her to marry me for three years. I had to be those things before I could ask her to be them. Oh, there's no doubt about it. And everybody goes, I want a wife like Crystal. But you go, okay, well, here's the deal. You can have a, life, a wife like Crystal if you do the work on yourself before you meet her. Yes. Because if you try to do it, if you want her to do the work for you, you're sunk. And the reason that you are so unbelievably right for crystal is because you did the work and all of a sudden you guys got together and one plus one equal 20. That's what we did. I love you. This is the legacy leadership radio show. I just can't thank Ted Anderson and Genesis communication network for putting us on the radio for the last 12 years in a row out of the kindness of your heart. We certainly don't deserve it, but we sure appreciate it. We'll stick around. We're going to come back right after this. Good job, Mr. Radio Host. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> you awesome. guys, we love you. So this is a real quick break, about 20 seconds, and we'll come right back. Doug Stair, thanks for tagging all those people. Jackie Stockdale, you're here. Christina Zahara, we love you. It's just, oh, there's a little, I owe you a call. Uh, Danny, Daniela. Yeah, yeah, so it's unbelievable. She changed her name. I can't even pronounce what she changed her name to. It's unbelievable. How do you change your name in your 40s? I think she shortened it from Daniela to Danny, but oh. that's a name that that's Well, like I've got bad eyesight. All right. And we're back. Welcome to the Legacy Leadership Radio Show with Adrian <laughs> Chanel and Tom Chanel. We are with Crystal and Mark Victor Hansen talking about their amazing book, Ask in the community that has been created around it, which you can get plugged into completely for free at askthebookclub.com. Put that back up. Okay, so here's the reason. I've been going to askthebookclub.com for the last 12,519 days straight. <laughs> True story. It's the same thing as an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting. You go in there and you reinforce what you already know over and over and over again. And there's a lot of days that you forget what you already know over and over and over again. And then there's a lot of people in there that don't even know what they're talking about. And the Ask the Book Club is so unbelievable because you can go in there with like-minded people and get the answers that you already know. That's why I go to an AA meeting every day. It is genius. They've created the community around the concept where people feel like they are included. They feel the BLTSs. They feel like they belong. They feel like they're loved. They feel like they can trust the other people in the group and they feel safe. And that's why that club is magic, Mark. 
and my beautiful crystal, because it is what it's all about. And it's about the heart, not the head, right? That's right. And I, and I think just um, you sort of feel that difference even when you, when you start to read the book. Tom, yeah. You realize that kind of you've entered a new phase of your life. And we were talking before about how you, you come clean with yourself. Um, it really gives you permission. First of all, we share all these stories of people who kind of mess things up by yeah. not acting, you know, um, missed huge opportunities by realizing they were scared to ask that second time, like Rita Davenport, you know, that's, that's how she missed out on about her $3 billion deal. And this is a woman, you know, who had a lot of, uh, a lot of charisma and so intelligent, but even she was scared. You know, she, she had a great idea. She asked the first time and the guy said, no, she walked away with her tail between her legs, put the idea on the shelf, just kept going. And he took her idea and made it a, you know, the other guy that, that was her competition took her idea and turned it into a $3 billion idea. Um, so it's just, that's, it's sort of what you were talking about earlier, Adrian. It's, it's like it's really coming to the truth of ourselves and, and realizing like when we start asking these questions, what have we missed out on? You know, what are we why are we playing small and how can we get to the bottom of that? And the, it'll be those questions that lead us to the next version of ourselves, which is so exciting. You guys. Yeah. The best you is always waiting out there. And it's just like another question and an answer away because the answers just become that road, that bridge to your ultimate destiny. If you listen to the answers and pay attention, you know? You know what I thought was adorable? Is Rita Davenport's husband's birthday cake was bigger than her head. <laughs> that was so awesome. I can hardly wait to tell her that. But she so is funny. so adorable and so tiny and such a force of nature. And you guys know Harvey McKay, you know her. I mean, and I'll never forget, one of my favorite shows I ever did with you, Mark, was with Art Linkletter, and you'd just written how to make the rest of your life the best of your life. And you and he just started a solar company at age 94, and you guys just, I'm going to have to find that show and put it up because yeah, it was be magic, cool. but I love you guys so much because you never change. Well, we are in love with Art. By the way, her daddy owned all the Kentucky Fried Chicken in Mexico yeah, with Art. I didn't know that when I was marrying yeah. her. And, and Art and I wrote that book starting then and then until he was 98, and we'd have like 10,000 people show up and he'd do all those great jokes from kids say the darndest things, people are funny and house parties. But what we were teaching, like when we down to the village with 10,000 people a night and 10,000 people bought a book, it was amazing. He said, we don't want you to retire from something to nothing. We want you to retire, put on new tires and go in a new, bigger, better direction. And what I'm saying to all the seniors out there, of which I'm one, I'm 75, and I'm going to live be 127 options for renewal. Each and every one of us <laughs> has to be doing to be be happy. And I won the Happiness Hall of Fame. We were just at Stanford a short time ago, and and to be happy, <laughs> number one, you got to be into selfless service. Yeah. Number two, you got to have a purpose bigger than yourself that gives you meaning. And number three, you've got to have relationships like the four of us do. Yeah, and you know what? It is so evident your joy between each other mm -hmm. you can't <laughs> it is unbelievable that's what i want when don't i do that to your son <laughs> oh my god where's my wife of all the shows not to watch it's unbelievable oh we do god. have a lot of fun together and, uh, and we're so grateful because you know that we have this that we have each other because it took a lot of lessons to get here tom and adrian you know we we both were previously married and we knew this this time around, we needed to take an asking journey. We need to figure out what went wrong and what we needed, what we really needed and wanted in, in, a, in a future spouse, you know, because otherwise we both felt like I, I just remember sitting on saying, you know, I'd rather sit on the couch by myself on Friday nights than just yeah. do the same thing. You know what I mean? And so it, it's got to be different. And you, let's dig you into that on the other side of the break, because that, that's a fascinating thing. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Nice job. <laughs> Sorry. He cut you off. I, but that's okay. That was our fault. Take, I, I do want to dig into that, though, because I think that's a, a huge, huge thing. Sorry, go ahead. Linda Sue Brinkley. Hello, Ellie. I mean, I just want every Christina. We just, I just want these people that watch this show to know we love them, because I'm telling you what, 
we don't exist without you, do we? No, we do not. And we have some it's amazing all, people who come people. here week after week. So we're going to come back here. And this is not a lot of times so we could yeah. advertise our two. And we're back. It is Tom Chenault. It is Adrian Chenault. And it is the Legacy Leadership Radio Show with Crystal Hansen and her sidekick, Mark. But I'm going to tell you one thing right now. These two are a powerhouse. And just believe them. Because I've known Mark for a very, very long time. And I have known him to be a man behind the camera who's awesome. But when he's off camera, he's 10 times better. And I just want all, I swear to God, it's true. I just can't believe what I hear behind your back from people that are just, they, they're in awe having met you and the things that you do. And you're helping my buddy, Dr. Finance, who needed to have somebody help him with his life. I mean, you are given guidance to the unguided. And I, I just want to thank you for that publicly because you are a force of nature. So over to you, buddy. Well, we, we believe that tithing has four aspects and a fifth mm -hmm. bonus. And that is you got to tithe your thinking. And that's everybody that you meet because there's no, when I did Chicken Soup of the Christian, so the first story I wrote is that there are um, no coincidences, only God incidences. So number you tithe your thinking, your time, your talent, your treasures, and then you're thankful for both the good and the bad in your life, which goes back to the, that last point about happiness that you'd asked about. There you go. Because most people aren't thankful for when they got a problem. But when you're thankful yeah. for that, when you have that attitude of gratitude, back to what Crystal said, you start to ask new questions and get new results. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's so huge. And incidentally, the I was talking to our friend Rick Evers earlier today, and he almost died. He's a pastor. He was about to start a new church. They had just moved to a new place. He had young kids, and he got double pneumonia and didn't know it was that bad, and decided he'd sleep it off and go to the emergency room in the morning thinking that would be fine. He woke up septic and almost died. And he's literally, they're about to put him into an induced coma to, and they don't know if he's going to come back. And he's like, God, what are you doing? I've got a wife to take care of. I got kids to take care of. I'm starting this church. And he goes, I heard clear as day. God said, you think I can't take care of your wife better than you can. You think I can't take care of your kids better than you can. And wow. he went, and he goes, and, and in the most sarcastic voice you can imagine, which made me laugh. And he goes, Okay, you're right. Whatever whatever happens, happens. And they put him under and he came back and he got a whole new lease on life and has done unbelievable stuff. But it was just like yeah. you, you know, you have to have those moments where you get low and you've got to learn how to be grateful even at the, at the bottom. And so that's a great lesson. Yeah. So so that's we amazing. looked at how many questions there are in the Bible and it turns out three. 1,339. The first question God asks to Moses, who is the guy who wrote the Genesis and most of the Old Testament, a lot of the Old Testament. And he said, Moses, is there anything that limits me, God? It's a heck of a question because God can fix that pastor's lungs he, if, if, if the guy prays for healing and accepts it and, and take care of the mom, his, his wife and, and kids. It's amazing. Well, and also just the challenges, you guys. I mean, we should thank our challenges and our tribulations because you never come out of those worse. You're always a better, wiser, smarter, usually way more compassionate, you know, because we all get in our zone and go, okay, that can't happen to me. You know, it makes us look at everything in a different way. And the person that comes out the other side of that experience is a better person. All of us are that better person. And so, you know, you can't you can't curse the setbacks. You really need to see, you know, what the gift is, what the silver linings and what the blessings are from that. And I'm sure he he feels that way, you know. Yeah, because if adversity, if you look at it right, turns out to be an advantage. I mean, my going bankrupt when I wanted to kill myself and commit suicide and I thought I'm useless and I've lost all that money and other people's yeah. money and I can't make it. And then all of a sudden I said, I'm going to be a speaker and it did really took off. Now I worked my buns off. I worked only Tony Robbins and I did four talks a day, the first three years in the business. Nobody is that nuts, no, but I had nothing else to do. And I didn't want to go on social security and I wanted to make it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I want to ask Crystal first. And, and, and I think this, this is probably a question that has a different answer maybe for both of you, but this book is so amazing. And, and you, I can feel that it was somehow planted or written on your heart. And, and I just, I can sense that somehow you, you had something happened that brought about that this was a book that had to come out for you. 
how, talk about the process of, of how you became inspired to write the book, Ask. You know, we, we actually were talking like this about struggles that people were going through, Adrian. Like we, we get to meet so many cool people in the world. And so often we're like, what is it? You know, the, these people are smart, amazing, inspiring, you know, they should be like great things should be happening for them. And, uh, you know, what is the difference? What is it that helps us? We haven't always had a perfect life, you know, individually and together, we've had our own challenges. And so we said, what was that thing? If we could say, give like that secret thing, that key, that secret sauce that helped us transcend our problems, our issues and overcome those. What was it? Because how can we help others? Yeah. There, there's some, there is something that has pushed us along because no one really believes some of the things we've gone through. You know, you think, oh, your life was so easy. It's been so nice to be you, but <laughs> not true. Right. And so, and that thing, that thing that we discovered is if, if we had to boil it down to one thing, it's like our ability to ask the right question in the right way at the right time to open up a new opportunity, to get a new answer, to make a new decision, to pivot, to find a new solution, to get a, a new illumination that wasn't there before. And so it's just, when you think about that, think about the possibilities of asking and what is delivered to you. And that's why it's biblical. I mean, you know, ask, seek, and knock. And the interesting thing, you know, about ask, seek, and knock, it's like biblical code, A-S-K, ask, seek, wow. it still spells ask, right? That's awesome. You have to keep asking, you have to keep seeking, you have to keep knocking on those doors and we're promised that we'll find the answers. And so that's really big. It's a, it's a huge gift. And, and it, it doesn't stop because of the question Tom asked four questions ago, because I'm now 59 and a half, 65, 72, and I've got a 401k. <laughs> I can retire. I got a million dollars, which by the way, a million dollars is not very much. I wrote all those money books, like one minute millionaire cash flash ridges. <laughs> a million bucks is nothing. And it's not enough to retire on. I don't care if you go to Costa good, Rica, right? it's better than not, but all of us need to work for the rest of our lives. Cause there's nowhere in, in any spiritual literature I'm familiar with. And I'm, I'm steeped in obviously the Bible. I did chicken soup with this whole Bible and sold 70,000 a week at Walmart. But the fact of the matter is, there's no way that says go though and never retire. There are no over and out. Because right. here's what happens. You retire your body parts to big G because he says, whoops, they've given up. They don't need to live anymore. And people come up to us and say, well, you're rich. Why don't you go buy an island and live on it? Well, that's that's a vacation. That's not a life. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> that That's exactly right. And it's you, I, I love that, Crystal, you talked about the, the whole – spirit of this book being born of that desire to, you know, to contribute and to find, you know, how, how can we distill some of these lessons that we have learned in our lives yeah. to others? And I also, you know, I, I appreciate the transparency. We, you know, Bob Bodine was, was on the show last week and, you know, he's walked a really hard last couple of years and he's a guy who looks like he has it all together on the outside, right? It's so easy to look at somebody like you two and go, man, they, you know, they've no got problems. it made. And that's, you know, that's never the case. Every person, every walk has these really, you know, has heartache, has challenges, has its own sets of challenges. And, and sometimes the bigger you get, the, the bigger those challenges become, right? Yep. And, you know, when you start thinking it's happening to you instead of grateful that it's happening, it just shows you don't trust God because whatever you're going through, it's because God's got something so much bigger and better for you. If you'll just get your head out of here and just accept that and surrender to it, you thought I was going to say that. And uh, all of a sudden, it's, you know, it becomes this conversation called game on, God. We're getting yeah. through this. What's next? What do you got? Because I'm telling you, it is something. Look at Elon Musk. You brought him up. Do you know Peter Van Dam? What is what's that guy's name? Van Damidus or something like that? Damidus, Peter Damidus. Yeah, you guys know him? Yeah, of course. Yeah, He's we know. a thinking son of a gun. And... Uh, I love him. I'm telling you, he just you know, I, I, man, this did yeah. back to what we were talking about. You know, my most famous cliche or quote is you got to read to be freed. Well, Peter Diamandis got a hundred, uh, $10 million from Elon Musk to go into Africa. 
And in 90 days, they took totally illiterate people. Now, remember, my parents right. were illiterate Danish people because there's no ESL as a second language back during World War II. It didn't exist. So, But he took all these people in 90 yeah. days and taught them how to read and, and how to do basic math yeah. and took them from illiteracy to literacy. It took and put on steroids ESL, English as a second language. And 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 what does that mean? That means 100% of people down line are going to be able to listen to shows like this and grow and glow and be all that they can be. Because what we're saying is, the question is, what do you want to be? What do you want to do? What do you want to have? Those are questions to make you fulfilled during your life. Because a, a meaningful life means a contributive life where you're you know, creating, contributing, and being charitable. So we're going to run out of time if we don't pivot. I want to know about the Mark Victor Hansen and Crystal Hansen Library. What's so exciting <laughs> is that the book industry started to get crushed. Now, I've been in it 50 years. I'm with eight major houses, Random House, Hay House, HCI. Love everybody in the business. Love the librarians, everybody. But gosh, the pandemic took 19,000 bookstores, turned into 400, crushed them. And those are people I love and know. And then the biggest book publisher, Random House, 25 billion a year, just went, Pew. they just laid off 8,000 people, fired the chairman and vice chairman. So we were looking around saying, well, wait a second. The most important thing is have books out there. So we know the book business inside out and everybody in it. So let's us start a publishing company. Last year, we were 14 months old right now. We had 18 number one bestsellers out of 18 that we did. Right now, we got 88 in the queue. We are what's called a hybrid. You can do no book, which I think is bad. You could self-publish, which I've done a lot of. I did, you know, the first book I ever self-published was Stand Up, Speak on Win. I sold 20000 in a year to little insurance audiences, $200,000 worth. It was great. And then you could you could go to a big house if they'd let you in, but you got to be Joe Rogan and have 2 million sales or they don't want to see you. Or you can come to a little house like us where you invest. And let me just give the quickest story on that. Crystal and I are talking to a, an investment real estate group called The Collective in Houston, 700 people. Little kid at seven o'clock at night comes up shaking like a leaf. And I could see he was smarter than smart. So I said, what are you shaking about? He said, you're world's best selling author and you intimidate me. So Crystal, I smile at him and I say, I couldn't intimidate anyone, especially somebody as smart as you. What's your story, kid? He said, I'm 14. I'm worth $843,000. I'm an Eagle Scout. I'm, I'm finishing my black belt in Aikido. I pay, I bought my first house at eight years old, path to real estate deaths in Ohio. I said, kid, we got to do your book. He invested in himself, cost $29.9. We did his first book, Garage. It's been number one kid's book for the last 10 weeks in a row. Devin is our hero. I love yeah. Devin. Yeah. I yeah. talked to you. Yeah. 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 You've been very kind to my authors. and, and he, He's amazing, isn't uh, he? These kids. Oh. So you got to see what happened. The little brother comes up who's only 12 and goes like that. Oh, they're just incredible. He's like, I own my own real estate. <laughs> yeah, $250,000. He's so cute. And he says, well, I just heard you talk that we could really solve the problem of global warming with one thing, planting one trillion trees. Oh, yeah. So, they so, 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 so he did the book called Treehouse with us. And he, and he did his homework. I'm talking to he and his parents on the phone. And I said, do you know the story of Johnny Appleseed? And he said, I don't know that. His dad said, I'm buying you the book on the way home, son. Anyhow, Johnny Appleseed was a real guy. John Chapman planted 15,000 trees from New York to L.A. with uh, New York to Chicago, sorry. And and anyhow, this kid's going to plant a trillion trees with uh, drones and, and all that cool stuff. But everything from mulberry to apple. So nobody will be hungry in the future world because of one 12-year-old kid who's investing his mouth, his mind, his, his money in making that happen. And that's what we can do. We're going to come back right after this. This is the Legacy Leadership Radio Show. Thank you, Tom Sheffield, for our being our amazing producer, because I know that I love you, and I know that you're going to have to do some clipping, but that's just the way it goes. Robert Dickey, I want you to meet Mark and Crystal Hansen. I don't know many people like Rob, Bob Dickey. He is spiritual and natural things natural and spiritual things. His father's a pastor and I love the guy and I just want you guys to meet each other. And he put a comment in. Thanks, Mark. So sweet. Thanks. Bob. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, everybody. All right. We're back. All right. Hold on. We're going to, we're going to come back at, at 29 so that we Adrian's fixing everything. So, cause I screwed a lot up right during that whole day. <laughs> Adrian's got it all together. He's yes. pulling it all together. <laughs> and we're back. Final segment on legacy leadership with Crystal and Mark Victor Hansen. What a conversation it has already been. I can't believe the show is getting close to an end, but it's, I, it's it is. And yet 
we can probably have him back again. Yeah, we can, yeah, we need probably we need you like once a month. But you wanted to talk to me about a guy, some doctor. And uh Mark, doctor? do you remember who that was? The doctor, whatever his name is. I got his name written down. Oh uh, uh Dr. Jordan Peterson. Oh, Jordan, oh, Jordan Peterson. Peterson. Oh. Jordan Peterson is, is the intellectual giant of our time. He is a psychologist. He is a Canadian. He is His stuff on YouTube is just profound. He's written a book called 12 Rules, but, and I did a whole YouTube on him so you can see it. But the fact of the matter is that he is anti-Davos, as are, are we. I think I'll talk to my wife on this one, and I think you guys are, because they are doing dangerous things. Like They want to cut the population down to 500 million. Well, the population's 8 billion. And they just had the wrong information. Malthus was wrong. He said population would grow right. two, four, six, eight uh, geometrically and, and, and food would be arithmetic. No, back at the turn of the century, 2% of the people were in white collar, 98% were farming because we needed it. Today, it's just the opposite of that. We can feed everyone. We can house everyone if we do it comprehensively, if we think it through clearly, if we do it. And what he's doing is he's putting together a consortium of people who think cleanly, neatly, ask questions wisely and say, how do we make it work? Not how do we not make it work? Wow. Well, yeah. So I want to know about the 2000. I want to know how to help with that. Uh, one thing that I uh, am amazed by was I was on YouTube and I heard that you need to be doing these two minute, these little short snippet things on YouTube. Shorts. Shorts, they're called. <laughs> so I got, well, I, you know, I'm going to be the oldest young guy doing it. So I thought, I thought I'd go in there and take a look. And lo and behold, Mark Victor Hansen and Crystal own that space on YouTube. They've already done it. They've got like 9 million of them done. And they are the most fascinating, coolest things you're ever going to watch. So go follow them on YouTube because they own that space. And I started trying to do it. And they're hard. It's hard to have a whole thought in no time flat. And I can't even do it. I swear I'm, I'm terrible. But sure. you're good, huh? By the way, just so you know, you got to do it in 59 seconds. They are called shorts. Right, They've got to be very specific. they got to have a good thumbnail and yeah. a different picture of you each time that is colorful and wise. <laughs> and, and we do several of each a day. Uh, just because, remember, I've, I've touched 50,000 books. People give them to me. I've been in the book business yeah. 50 years. You know, so I, I read really fast, as does my wife, yeah. and, and we own the material, and people ask questions, and whatever the question is, I can have an answer to, uh, and you say, well, that's pretty pompous of you, but I, I, I'm telling you the truth, and, and most of the time, still. like we do seminars <laughs> still and, and conferences and big meetings, like we're being invited to Europe right now to travel through three or four countries, and it, it's really exciting because we're saying, hey, look, let us talk for 20 minutes. That'll open the mind, everybody. Then they got to ask questions. And when they ask questions, it is profound because it's always a question that the whole audience needs to have answers. Yeah. I mean, God is being yeah. doing profound things for our experience. It's called Mark and Crystal GPT. <laughs> <laughs> they got it. I mean, it's unbelievable. They're so good at it. It's frightening. And you have to watch them because it's over before you know it. And you go, holy yeah. mackerel. So yeah. then I tried to copy it and I am, don't watch mine. Whatever you do, don't watch mine, <laughs> watch theirs, but it's pretty cool. Tom's brilliant. Don't kid Tom, yourself, you're ladies so and humble. gentlemen. You are such a good guy. You are so humble. You're and humble brilliant. just means teachable and, yeah. and educable and and, uh, <laughs> and humble at, at the time of Aramaic, the language of Jesus and everybody. I hope you watch the movie Chosen or the oh, serialization, yeah. so which we love. And we've been meeting a lot of the people around that. But the fact of the matter is, is it, uh, you know, it, it meant, Humble and meek meant being like a horse ready to do it. Didn't mean Teachable. being weak. And everybody, what Jordan Peterson is now saying, we all got to stay strong. We both work out every day hard because you got to be physically fit, mentally fit, spiritually fit, and have real metal, M-E-T-T-L-E, spiritual stuff inside that shows up outside. I can predict the future, and here's what I'm going to predict. The minute I get the, off the air, I will have a call from Ken Walls telling me he taught Mark and Crystal that. Take that to the bank because he <laughs> is the best. And he is good on YouTube and a good man. And you know what I love is just seeing all these good people finishing first. And it's because you have been paving the way selflessly for the last 50 years. 
that you let other people win, Mark and Crystal. And I don't care if it's Art Linkletter all the way down to Devin. That whole accordion in between, which is decades. <laughs> it's a true story. Think about that. It's just incredible what you've done. And we can learn so much from the older people, but we can learn a lot more from the younger people. But our ego has us blocked and you've unblocked us. And I just I want to thank you both because it makes my life, not my day, to have you on the show with us. And thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Adrian. You guys are just so wonderful to be with. And you ask the best questions. You are such empowering facilitators. So everybody, everyone's blessed by the show, I'll tell you. So techmapping.com, baby cakes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, everybody deserves abundance for having a net worth to create their net worth. And what Art and I discovered is that everybody, as you get over 50, have got to cultivate at least two 20-somethings every year mm -hmm. that are real friends. And we got two guys that no. former president of ASU and his vice president that are our clo closest friends. I mean, they're desperate to come over here and eat and talk to us. And they teach us stuff every time and we mm -hmm. teach them stuff. So great. Contact mapping. It's awesome. There we go. Thank Everyone thank needs to do it. Thank you so much. It's been awesome having you guys here. We've got Michelle Masters, who's an amazing NLP coach, who's going to be a first time guest with us next week. It's going to be a really fun conversation. And it is always a joy having Mark and Crystal here with us on the Legacy Leadership Podcast. So thank you for listening. Make sure you come back and join us every week. We're live on Facebook uh, Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, and we will see you next week. Thanks for listening on the Genesis Communication Network. See you next time. You know what I think I love most about you two? What? What? It's because you're not producers. You're reproducers. <laughs> <laughs> you, Wait, are you, is she pregnant? And you do, you're <laughs> she's <first>. pregnant. <laughs> you guys teach people to be you. Think oh, about that. That's that so is cool. the gift that God gave you both, is both of you talk from where you came from. You talked about the trial of tribulation. You show everybody their life inside of your life and say, don't ever give up, get back up, get back on the horse, and you can win this day with God's help. And that's what I love about you both. Oh, thank that's, you, Tom. We that's couldn't love you more. And we hope you guys will visit yeah. us in Scottsdale. When we come to Denver, we're going to yeah. come over to your house for a meal. You can't believe this. Yeah, we got room for you, and Adrian doesn't, so you're staying with us. He's got kids running out of his ears, and it's just Denise and I and a dog. <laughs> So oh, we're worried about paying for that, that hotel. <laughs> All right. We love you. And thank you so much, you guys. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye.